when we first looked into the electrical system for this van uh, we kind of looked at lithium very quickly and as soon as we saw the cost of the batteries that were in the thousands that was it change of mind walked away and started looking back at the AGM type batteries but the more digging I did the more we found that actually you could build your own battery and we've shown here that we've built uh, a battery that is probably I think the battery and the BMS came into about 450 pounds and then if we add another 100 pounds for the um, battery protects that's 550 pounds which would cover you the equivalent of say 440 amp hours of AGM which is a roughly equivalent um, amount of usable power within those batteries yet this battery should last us anywhere between you know five maybe even ten times as long as equivalent AGM cells on top of that it's 100, 80, 100 kilos lighter which is absolutely huge especially in a camper van where weight can really quickly add up so I thought it might be useful just to try and describe what's going on when you're building your own DIY battery pack each one of these cells represents one of the lithium cells and they will have a positive and a negative on each one and they have a nominal voltage of I think it's 3.2 volts so four of them is going to give you 12.8 volts in total in theory you could just do this, you put your cells together, connect up in series, so positive to negative, and that's it, there's your battery, off you go. The problem with that is that over time, these cells might not quite drain evenly. The LifePo4 cells we're using are very good, but it is possible that you'll see this one going down slightly more than this one or this one, and over time they get out of balance. The system is will have a, a positive and a negative for the charging, and the charger will be set at 13.3 volts, and it will put 13.3 volts across here. But if one of these cells is particularly low, it will start getting overcharged or overdrained, things like that. So, to protect the batteries, to protect these cells from that, you want to use a battery management system. The way these battery management systems work is to take a very small wire from the positive and negative of each cell and all they're doing is using that to check what the voltage is of each cell inside some sort of small chip or brain. And some of these may also have the ability to um, draw some current so the system we've got has a bunch of resistors on it that can just draw up to like 850 milliamps so if one of these started getting up to say 3.6 volts it would turn on those resistors and jet use up some of that voltage and turn it into heat and that will just help keep everything in balance so that's what's meant by a balancer. There are loads more in-depth videos out there that explain the difference between top balancing and bottom balancing and what it's all about but for the purpose of this video all you need to know is we've got some way of balancing these so we're keeping the cells as close to pot as possible to the same voltage as one another and this particular system monitors them with an individual PCB which is connected to the positive and negative of each one. For hours, each one of these is connected together to the controller. And the controller talks to each one in turn, checks what voltage it's got, checks what the temperature is doing, and then tells it to do something or nothing at all. Takes that information and sends it via Wi-Fi and produces a web page for us. And on that web page it's got a nice graph telling us 
what each of the cells is doing. It's a really, really rough um, diagram of what we're talking about when we're talking about out of balance cells. Here you could see we would have one cell that's a bit low and one, one cell that's a bit high. What would happen with a balancer is it just starts drawing on this cell only. So it starts pulling this voltage down and then the whole system will carry on charging until this one is pulled up. This clever thing that our BMS is doing is it's talking to a relay board. And all the relay board is is a series of on-off switches. And these on-off switches are controlled by the controller with a set of rules. What we're looking at within the BMS is typically the temperatures and the voltages. The temperatures are important with lithiums because they have a window in which they need to operate. So lithium batteries can be charged between 0 degrees C and 65 degrees C. They can be discharged between minus 20 and 65 degrees C. So we need to make sure that we protect our batteries by turning off any charge sources before it gets down to zero, turning off any loads before it gets down to minus 20, and turning off both if the whole system got above 65 degrees or somewhere close. That's what the relays are handy for. It can be quite hard to um, handle the loads and the charging sources separately, uh, especially through relays. These re this type of relay here can handle a few amps at best. You certainly don't want to be putting through the full pack ampage current available. I mean, this pack can put out 272 amps continuously and uh, 544 uh, as a burst and relays just aren't going to handle that. You could start putting in solenoids and things. Thankfully there's some off-the-shelf products we can use to help with that. So here we've got a couple of Victron battery protects. Now these are really handy, relatively cost-effective solution that will turn on and off your the flow of electricity in one direction. They are meant to be to turn off the loads, that's how they're kind of described in the documentation, but there is no problem at all using them to charge off, turn off charging sources. The only thing you can't do is to run them in bi-directional, they are only one direction. So this bigger one is going to be for our loads and this will go between uh, it will come from our positive bus bar and then out to one of our fuse distribution blocks and that means when this gets a signal to turn off from one of these relays it can disconnect all the loads so that will protect it if the voltage gets too low or the temperature gets too high this one is going to be used to connect our Orion DC to DC charger and our solar controller and again this is sized to suit that the maximum charging we could get out of them is 60 amps this does 65 amps may as well just protect ourselves we don't need to go mad and it keeps the cost down so all this does is if this detects temperatures too low or the voltage is too high turn off this relay and all it'll do is disconnect the charging sources. So even if the charge is still turned on, they won't be anywhere, it'll be an open circuit. We'll use another one of these to talk to the inverter. The inverter can be a really, really high load. Thankfully, with the MultiPlus inverters, they have their own on-off um, trigger, similar to the way these battery protects work. So we can just hook straight into that if we want and similarly turn the inverter off as a load or turn the charger off as a charging source. So to put together one of these lithium batteries there's a few basic bits you need and then a few more bits and pieces you can get to make it better. So 
but main basic pieces you need the battery cells here are four identical 272 amp hour lithium uh, as well as life. that you need bus bars and these are going to connect the cells so that when they're connected in series you have a total pack voltage of about 12.8 volts one of the things I've done instead of using bolts because these threads are aluminium and there's a risk of stripping them I've just gone and got some studs grub screws that are screwed down into them and then I'll just use nuts on these which will reduce the number of times I'm going in and out of these threads therefore reducing the risk of stripping them so the bus bars are going to go from, if this is our main positive then we're going to go negative from cell 1 positive to cell 2 negative to cell 2 to positive to cell 3 negative of cell 3 positive of cell 4 so this is our main positive this is our main negative I've not screwed these down yet because I'm actually in the process of making a nicer cap for the top which will help support them and give me somewhere for my BS, BMS to mount and this is what I've come up with designed it and then 3D printed it and it's got some handy little features I mean it's it's not necessary it's just a nice to have but handy features of positives and negatives printed on here so I can make sure I definitely know where all the positives are and then also I've got these little mounting studs which I've just put some bolts in to thread them on where my um, BMS cell modules and controller module and relay board are going to sit as you can see I've only got half of the um, top part of this case that's because the other half is still on the printer at the minute uh, but what I'm going to do is use some aluminium extrusion to build a frame that the battery cells can sit in and this frame will also contain the heater pad and a, an aluminium base to spread that heat from the heater pad so uh, progressed a bit further with this battery build and this is quite a neat solution now I've got my two 3D printed tops their main function actually is to support my BMS and the BMS control relay board so these are the individual cell modules here and they uh, and it still need to make them they're going to have leads that connect to each cell so they'll monitor the cell voltages I've also got a temperature sensor stuck directly to the cell so that's going to monitor the actual cell temperature and then these themselves monitor their own temperatures this control module communicates with all four cells sends the information uh, well it actually delivers it via a web for a website that you can log into when you're on the local network and also then controls these four relays these four relays will be used for a few things one of which is this heater pad so here is a 15 watt heater pad um, glued to an aluminium plate and then these wires, which aren't connected to anything in a minute, they'll go from here via a fuse up to the one of the relays. Um, and the plan will be that below, say, 7 degrees, this relay will turn on, which will turn on this heater pad, and then once it gets to 9 degrees, it'll turn off again. I don't know if 15 watts is enough to keep this uh, amount of material warm because they are there's a lot of mass in here so a lot of thermal mass that this would need to keep up with but it won't be any problem at all just to buy some more of these 15 watt pads and glue them on there and there and to wire them all together so for now I'm going to try it with this and if I see a problem then I know I can add some more heat pads uh, one of the further steps I'm going to do although not quite yet, is to add some um, PIR insulation because I've got leftover 25mm insulation which I'm actually going to put around these battery cells to help keep them insulated so that the temperature is better maintained. Um, 
obviously leaving enough space that I can easily access these ports on the relays. Before we get that far though, I'm going to get on with wiring up the top of this battery pack. So here is the finished lithium battery. I've added a carrion handle just to make it easier to get in and out. Um, a couple of screw down points so I can screw it into the floor. I'll probably add two more just to be nice and safe. Here's the BMS. Um, it needs power here so that it's fully operational, although at the minute it is monitoring the individual battery cells. And then this is the relay board. I'm going to cut out some insulation and I'll probably just use gaffer tape to build a kind of insulated enclosure around it. This is my main positive terminal and this is my main negative terminal. So overall really happy. It's got a heated base, that's what these wires are out from. Um, again once, once we've got all the wiring in place I can connect it via one of these um, relays but I need to make sure I've got inline fuses and stuff and everything in place. So I've just um, very quickly hooked up a power regulator that's given me a USB power supply to my battery management system and then a regulated 12 volt power supply to my router. And with that I'm able to fire up the BMS. So this is a this data is hosted on the BMS you can see there and this is giving me individual cell voltages, module temperatures. At the minute I've only got one cell temperature hooked up, but if I can find my other thermistors I'll hook the others up as well. Showing the overall voltage of my pack is 13.34 volts. The range between all four cells is six millivolts so they are well balanced and then there's a lot more inside of this that I can do setting up my relay controls setting up my protections uh, which I will go ahead and do in the future so thanks so much for watching this video and um, if you've got any other questions or you like what you've seen please you know make sure you let us know down in the comments that's really useful uh, Perhaps have a look at some of the other build, the videos we're doing in the build. Maybe there's some ideas in there that you might be able to make use of in yours. Cheers.